<laughs> Let's get this going. Let's go ahead and play some more of this game. I absolutely enjoy this game. The last the last mission or two they've been they've been kinda easy for me. The other ones are a little bit had a little bit more complexity and more uh complex puzzles, but so far I have not had that. I don't know if there's a difficulty get increase on this. I don't, I don't think there is. But this is our according to what I saw online, there's only six cases in this game and this is the last case. The half moon walk. And I didn't really get too much uh I didn't really get too far into this mission. Uh I got like the first introductory. So like this kid that Sherlock Holmes hires to get information or steal things, as you would say, borrow. Uh I guess his brother was involved in some incident here that happened see there. Uh, re resol re resolving in a resulting in a murder, and uh, him getting blamed for it. So we're kind of on the case to kind of figure out what happened, and to prove whether or not his uh, his brother killed anybody. A tattoo from Westgate Prison. Vacotti must have done some time there. Vacotti. Trying to adjust to stand, doesn't fall over. He tried to stop the bleeding with his hand. Death was not instant. The bullet penetrated his stomach, a dreadful wound. Dreadful wound. Brian Vercotti suffered greatly. What a terrible way to die. God damn. God damn. How do we get over here? Oh, there's two bodies. I didn't even notice that other guy over here. Okay, so we have two bodies here. We have got a key from the last playthrough I was doing last night. What do you got to say about this, Constable? It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation, Mr. Damn. Holmes. Thank you. It's so dark here. I will not want to walk down this alleyway. It's scary as all shit. I feel like Jack the Ripper is gonna come up from the shadow over there and tank me. Although I'm not a woman, so maybe I'll have a chance. Kills only woman. Belief. One of the stories, right? Wiggins. I'll do anything to save my brother, anything? Mr. Holmes. What do you know about this, Ryan Turner? What have you got? Good eater, Turner. Oh, I, I heard Constable Varro reply to you as Mr. Holmes. Are you that detective, gentlemen? I've heard of you. Uh, and, well, I know things. Things about this evening. Excellent. Might we hear your story? Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Uh, I was already in bed when the fireworks started. A few moments after, I clearly heard two gunshots from outside. Please continue. I, I quickly got up and I grabbed the lamp from my nightstand and I rushed towards the window. I looked down and I saw two bodies. And there was a man with a gun who was standing nearby. Where exactly? Well, near this body. Did he notice you? I don't think so. He rushed towards Whitechapel Street without looking around. Okay, so he saw the guy that was there and then ran away. And begins his brother. Let's see, he's hiding something. Tell from his eyes. Or is it just animation video games? Dead eyes. Alakava. Blackover? Oh, war veteran, sure. Missing button. Or life. <laughs> make that make that assumption. Holmes. Mr. Turner, did you see anyone else in the street? 
No, I saw no one but that man. The murderer. The fellow they caught. Were the two shots you heard consecutive? Yes, the, there was a very short pause between them, and, and, and they sounded different somehow. It seemed to me that the second shot was louder than the first. That is an interesting comment. Okay. Mr. Turner, what were your actions after you stepped up to the window? I was afraid that the man with a gun might return. So I stayed close to the window till I saw the policeman coming in the half moon from Whitechapel. Then I walked out to tell them everything I saw. You have helped a deal, Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Turner. So what are we uh, got for the deduction? Dark window. Constable Merrill paid attention to Mr. Turner's window while he was running past the dead bodies. He did not observe anyone next to the window. It was dark there. Turner's view. Conflicting statements. Mr. Turner stated that he remained at the window of his flat until the police arrived. However, this is in conflict with Merrill's statement as the constable did not see anyone at the window. Hmm. Yeah, we got some conflicting statements here. How am I doing? Dialogue. Mr. Turner says that he was standing near the window of his flat the entire time, but according to Constable Merrill's statement, Mr. Turner's window was dark. So we need to talk to Constable Merrill about this. See what the hell he's got to say about this. Somebody's lying. Either they saw something wrong or they're not explaining to me everything. Somebody's lying. Maybe he's lying. Catching his stomach in front of me. How dare you. So rude of you, mister. Alright. So, uh, let's talk to... Constable Mero. It would be my pleasure to... Okay, so... I can't talk to him yet. Why? Evidence. Dialogue. And bring this up again. There you go. He's just bringing it up earlier. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. Find me. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, well, I think Constable oh. Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. You understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Yeah. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. Turner appears to live very modestly. Take a look at this fireplace. Fire. Yes, ashes. Burnt paper. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. I ain't up burning your hand, home. These words are illegible. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. He is, he is. Papers are thrown just a short while ago. Shelves.
The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. Broken cane. A perfect oh. match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. Liar. He did not mention that he was so near to the Lying victims. Lying to me. What are you hiding? Dead. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. I uh, see from that stain over there. <laughs> Maybe pissed so. I don't know. Oh, you'll be able to from that angle. Window. The wall. Tables, sweepings, shredded paper. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. Explain this, sir. This kitchen knife is quite sharp. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. Anything else you would like to know, Mr. Holmes? Examine this window. <clears throat> oh. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. Well, look at here. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Kenneth Butler. Oh, uh, there's a uh, Watson over there. The uh, Sparrow. Uh, Spectre Sparrow. Wow, well, whatever the fuck his name is. Um, not much. Oh. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. Cool. Approached the body, took something, broke the stick. Threw something into the fire. Oh, I gotta put these in order. Hold on. Alright, so, uh. Got off from bed. Got up from bed, took the stick, uh, got papers with a knife, threw something into the fire, hold on, shit, these are, alright, got up from bed, Open the window. Approached the body, took something. Uh, placed a broken stick. Got papers on a knife. And threw something into the fire. Go, uh, go with that. <laughs> stick was already out, already not broken. So he got up from bed, looked out the window, went downstairs, saw the bodies, took something from the corpse, his cane broke, a piece of the cane broke on the bottom, he left. He went back upstairs to his, to his room. 
Man, this is just a weird layout for this, for this apartment. Uh, got back up here. Placed a broken cane and put the and took whatever he took, put it in there. Cut some. He cut some paper with a knife. Threw it in the fire. Ooh, so Mr. Right. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? Allah. Maybe some money. I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Moby Dick. Well now, what a find. A precious jewel concealed inside a book. Wow. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Cool. So what you got to say about this? Would you take that from the body? Why are you messing with evidence? Speak. To turn him. How would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age. And when the situation requires it, Mr. Oh, Holmes. shit. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something, or someone, in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Oh, time can pull tricks on you. Bill the beans. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. Mr. Holmes, you assure you the other things I said were most sincere. But this bracelet. Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you Ooh. live in. I, I can explain. No, it's merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window, but you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler, and when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. All right, <clears throat> you've been spared. So where do we go from here? Search archives. Antique golden bracelet that was found in Mr. Turner's flat. It is decorated with distinctive ram heads. We need to investigate the bracelet and find out how it could have appeared at Half Moon Street. Interrogate Leighton and examine his belongings at Scotland Yard. Okay, we still need to do that. What else to look at? Around here before I do that. I can talk to anybody over here before I progress. It would be my pleasure to assist you with your investigation. 
I'm always wondering what's on your mind, Holmes. A fairly long pole with a forked end. A fairly You never have anything to say to me, home, uh, Watson. Object of interest, but what I... A fairly long pole with a forked end. Oh, I didn't know he was carrying a lantern. Ollie Powell. Mrs. Powell? What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony. Tell me again. Very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began, in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost, and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him, because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street, and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. My thank you, Miss Powell. Okay, so... That's about it. Is there anything uh, else I can look at around here? Don't let me get to the point where, hey, you want to leave? Well, let me. It seems like there's more to it beyond this point, but it won't let me even talk to anybody else. All right, so let's go to Baker Street and then we'll go Scotland Yard real quick. The mystery still continues. I'm gonna go ahead and investigate the bracelet. Search for bracelet. So I assume this would be under not chemistry. Poisons? No. Wounds and injuries? No. Oh. Well, marks and symbols. Divine syndicate. That is Okay. Newspapers. That is. But it's not a. That is. Study in the Scarlet Jack the Ripper. Uh. Art and architecture. Uh, Greek history. That is not. That is. That is. That is. That all right, is. All right. That. that oops. <laughs> 
continue my research in my archives. Which archive? Uh, five rams of uh, mytilene. These beautiful antique jewels represent a part of the Hellenistic treasures collection. Depicted are five heads of mountain rams upon a bracelet. Necklace and ring, each made of pure gold. Five rams of uh, mytilene have been missing from the museum since 1885. Research about antique. So... Not in chemistry, not in poison, not in wounds and injuries, not in martial arts, not marks and symbols. That, 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 that. Let's look at the. That, that, that is not the one I. That, 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 that. Here it is. Oh. One victims, Kenneth Butler, was involved in the story of the stolen Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. Okay. Tell me more, tell me more. Find the use of the middle door key from the Kenneth Butler. Vincent Foley, who committed the robbery of Hellenistic treasures in prison ten years ago, the treasures have remained undiscovered up to this day. A treasurer's theft. The Hellenistic treasures were stolen yesterday evening while being transported by cab on their way from the British Museum to the Glassford Fine Art Exhibition. Pawn shop owner Kenneth Butler contacted Scotland Yard that night and provided information regarding a gentleman who had attempted to sell him a collection of historical art at his pawn shop in Church Street. Police have since captured a described man, a professional thief by the name of Vincent Foley, who had been in the process of escaping London via the port. He was recognized by the surviving driver of the cab that had transported the collection of Hellen Hellenistic treasures. Vincent Foley refused to confess, as where the remainder of the treasures were hidden, he was eventually imprisoned. The lost treasures are still to be found. Alright. Go to Scotland Yard before we go to the pawn shop. I'm breaking down. Talk to the guy who was caught at the scene of the crime. Was what his story is about. Whatever brings you here so late at night? I'm interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession, which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. Thank you, Lestrade. Mr. Holmes, what is the trouble with that lad? Isn't he guilty of murder? No, oh, idiot. Let me investigate further. A cheap watch. Bought with his own money, no doubt. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. Viable weapon. It seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. Unless he's a marksman, he definitely had shots there. Two different consecutive shots. First. Could have been a different gun. Uh. Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots as in fact. 
three shots were made at a single in a, at, 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 a, at first a single shot was fired and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterward Turner could hear the contrast between fired guns at different points and have moved Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots as in fact shots were made at a at first, a single shot was fired. Two guns fired simultaneously directly afterward. He enacted a crossfire at half. Okay. Need to. That, that case. There was a possible crossfire between Kenneth Butler, Brian Fricati at Half Moon Street, examined the dead bodies, and formed the reenactment. Okay, I'll talk to this guy first. Please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. In the flesh. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I I'll tell you everything. All right. Before I even ask you your story, I examine you. Scars. Deep scar, occasional fights. Grew up on the streets. Word. Recent beating, resisted arrest. Hot headed. Fancy scarf, downtown fashion. Bushy job. Office clerk. Escape prison tattoo, past imprisonment, committed a crime. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering off Moon. And then suddenly... What with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray, continue. I turned a corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I, I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Leighton, 
Are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm. And what about that? Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps it's strange, but I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. I follow him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish, unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. Escape prisoners, so you may have known these people because one of them had they had tattoos on them, signify they were inmates. So you may have been hanging out with them. They may have gotten shot at some disagreement, and then he was after them. Makes sense. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vacotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? How? However, could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Correct. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. All right. Spill the beans. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? And you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released, and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. All right. Uh, Titan statements, common statements. Uh, the person who whom Leighton Chapman describes in his statements is in of his own imagination created to vindicate Leighton was holding a revolver with two fired cartridges when he was caught after the crime in Half Moon. Fuck my time. Uh, victims. Kenneth Butler and Brian Vercotti were victims of a double murder carried out by one person. Double murder. Collection of yeah, what's told. Two victims, over. <coughs> violent crime committed in Half Moon Street by. Lane Chapman could have had a personal motive. 
Latent statements had stated that he saw a person leaning over a dead body. Just as he entered the scene, Leighton took a gun from the body and set off in pursuit of the man. Found them by flash light. The witness testimonies and the crime weapon clearly point to one possible culprit. Lane Chapman. Telling you evidence. And you go ahead. Find the use of the Down the dead bodies and perform the reenactment. Go back to Half Moon Street to reenact the scene of the crime. Hello, hello, hello. <clears throat> What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you caught, beat up and imprisoned. Ah, the murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. Watch your right. mouth, lad, else you'll be joining that worthless <laughs> brother of yours. Calm down. It would be my pleasure to assist. One of the victims possibly fired his gun twice. Find out who it may have been, who it might have been. Like the gunman. Okay. Take a look over here. Is there a gunshot over here? I am unable to see any higher. I need to find something to lift my lamp. And this will be the object of interest. Remember, the pole. Take that pole. This should Down be that useful. Bit sideways and stick a set up to candy ass. One shot there. Nothing interesting here. Yeah. So that's not possible. It again. Nothing here. So Nothing that's interesting. not possible. It's so not from that angle. It's like this gunman. Right in the stomach. This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. Hey. Watson, third shot fired in this street. Third shot, two victims. Kenneth Butler and Brian Fricotti both died of crossfire, with each of them holding a gun, and one of the guns not missing. I don't think that's possible because that other shot would have hit that other side or it would have found the bullet hole on the other side I was looking at earlier. So, not a crossfire. Seems like a double murder to me. Oh, that's quick. Leighton Chapman committed a double murder on Half Moon Street. An old and mutual enemy between Leighton Chapman and Brian Friday was the motive for this crime.
Um. Not possible. Lane Chapman's statement regarding the jacket and mail disappeared. Half Moon Street now seems reasonable. Yes. Three shots at this scene of the crime prove the presence of a second gun that is now missing. Um, a second gun is missing. Uh, right. True. Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots as in fact three shots were made. Constable Marrow, your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. Playing hide and seek. I shouldn't look for Mr. Holmes here. He's hiding in Half Moon Street. I shouldn't look for Mr. Holmes here. He's hiding in Half Moon Street. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. go Mr. Holmes it wasn't difficult to find <laughs> you at all it is obvious now no one could escape constable marrow's lamp while hiding in the street so no one could have hiding in the shadows of the half moon as a single run through this narrow street with a lamp could reveal at every corner so ordinary man if we can ensure that there is no that there was no more person in Half Moon Street at the time of the crime, there is no way to forward or back for his escape, only up. Let us reenact the action to create fireworks described by Leighton and climb the wall. Walls go. 
It would be my pleasure to reenact this. Find the flare gun to emulate the fireworks and tools for climbing up the wall. Air gun. Mr. We can assure that there was no one, that there was one more. We can assure that there was one more person in Moon Street at the time of the crime, and there was no way to forward or back. Then there was no way in forward or back. Irina, create the fireworks described by Layton. Attempt to climb the wall. Okay. Really close your door. Oh. It's an item that I need to, that I'll get when I do the other things I need to do. Uh, go to the pawn shop. All right, <clears throat> we'll see. We need to go to the pawn shop. See what we can find here. Okay, let's see what we could find over here. <laughs> Doing over here. Can I throw up. Well, let me get in the way of your fun, there, buddy. Fuck my go. Oh, the only place I can get. 
Use the key. Mr. Butler's key matches the lock. Perfectly. Perfect. These tools are exactly what I need to climb the wall. I'll just take them for myself, thank you. Oh, these clocks. Flare gun. This is exactly what we need in order to imitate the flash of the fireworks. Nicholas. Oh. The Ram's Heads. This necklace belongs to the five Rams of Mytilin collection. Interesting. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this collection all this time, ten years after the theft. Ten years after the theft. Hello. Hello, Kenneth. I remember you once told me about three pieces of golden jewelry with ram heads from ancient Greece. Still got them, right? Well, good news for you. I found a man loaded with money who's crazy about those jewels. Ready to fork out a small fortune. I can arrange a meeting with this uh, money bag for you, but I want you to cut me in the deal. I'll be waiting for you at crossing Great Ale and Half Moon Street on the Sunday evening fireworks. Oh, they're meeting together to sell off. This jewelry. Ancient Greek. Three pieces of golden jewelry. Search for the missing Helen. Helen is. Search for the missing Hellenistic treasures could be the motive for the crime that was committed in half. Turner picked up the bracelet directly after the murder, but the ring is still missing. The man, the option, it could be it. Burglary motive. It looks as though Mr. Butler kept a careful record of his operations. Okay, back to Half Moon Street to recreate the, uh, see if a third person could have escaped from there. Watson, so quiet today. Why are you looking at me? I'm just watching you, lad. I never know what to expect from people like you. People like me? Yes, street beggars and thieves. I ain't a thief. Oh, no. Then where did you get whatever it is that you're gnawing on? I very much doubt Come that down, you man. bought it. What ain't seen can't hardly be stolen.
Constable, I would like to perform another kind of reenactment with your help. I'm listening, Mr. Holmes. I want to check if Leighton's testimony can be trusted. If someone could vanish into thin air at a specific moment. But Holmes, I don't see how. I am going to be the mysterious gentleman whom Leighton followed. I will stand exactly where he saw him before he was blinded by the flash. Watson, you will be Leighton. When I fire the signal flare, you should start to chase me. I understand, Holmes. You, Constable Marrow, just play your part and do exactly as you did. Just, please, wait five seconds after the signal flare. I doubt that Polly Powell would have screamed any earlier. As you say, Mr. Holmes. Let us begin, then. Catch me if you can. If you can. All right. Find a spot where a man might be able to climb the wall. All the options I can. None of these are the fucking wall. The street lights fall directly on this wall. Not an oh, ideal spot. Fucking, uh. The, uh. The climbing gear. What am I on my top? The moon illuminates this wall. Anyone trying to climb it would be easily spotted by Constable Marrow. This wall is cast in shadow. It would be difficult to see anyone <clears throat> scaling it. Right. And all that time, I can barely see anything. He's a little far fetched. Holmes, are you there? I should try climbing faster. My God, a man can't just disappear. Barely see anything. Going pretty slow. I don't know how fast I can want me to do it. Holmes? Are you there? Damn it. I should try climbing faster. I'm trying, I'm trying. I can barely see anything. Holmes? Are you there? Where is he? My god, a man can't just disappear like that. Holmes? Holmes? Where are you? I cannot see you, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson, it seems that Mr. Holmes has disappeared. Don't worry, gentlemen. I am up here, above your heads. How on earth did you get up there, Holmes? I am using crampons and a climbing axe, although the person we are looking for did not leave any traces of such tools. Constable, is there any way to get to the top of this building? Yes, Mr. Holmes, I can show you. The door to the building can be found from Whitechapel Street. Gentlemen, I am on my way down. 
No, it is possible third man could have escaped here. This is the back door of the building with the attic floor that you required, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. These shards of glass are from the window above. Broken window. A cluster of thick black threads. They're unusually strong. I should examine them under the microscope. It's empty. Someone broke through the window to get inside the attic, but in his haste, he ripped his jacket. In his haste. We can conclude Leighton Saw climbed up the wall, broke into the attic window, and escaped through the hatch. Okay. There we go. Latent statements make sense. Uh, latent statement regarding the mysterious jacket of the man who participated in the shooting and the half moon was proven to be true. The witness testimonies in the crime weapon three point to one culprit. Latent innocence. Double murder. I mean, Chapman didn't do it. Bomb analysis. The attic. On the attic. On uh, the attic. I'm all I'll do it. All right, back to Baker Street. And while that happens, I will be right back.
And we're back. After a quick bathroom break. That white background out of there. Uh, perform an analysis. Examine the black threads. All right. Gotta sit up straight. Ugh. Let us yeah. take a closer look. I feel like this damn table's gonna wear out in all spots that I put this stand in. I gotta get a better, a better microphone and better table for that matter. It is not a thread, but a hair. I very much doubt that it is human. I need to compare this sample with a human hair and a horse hair. Hmm, a shaving brush is usually made from horse hair. Watson, uh, could you please pass me your shaving brush? Here you are. Uh, Watson, look, what's outside the window? Well, I don't see anything. <laughs> Ouch! Holmes! Oh, don't make such a fuss. One little hair. One little hair. This is a most unusual hair. Human hair is significantly thinner than the black sample. The horse hair is thinner than the hair that we found. So, this black hair belongs to an animal, and it is larger than a horse. A hair from a large and exotic animal. Okay. Oh. An animal did this? The man who vanished from the third from the crime scene at Half Moon could be a circus acrobat. He managed to scale a thirty foot high wall in a matter of seconds. A hair from a large exotic animal was found on the discarded on was found on his discarded jacket. Possible. The person who was seen by Leighton Chapman escaped from the crime scene by climbing the wall. He was a skillful acrobat. Skillful acrobat. The criminal took a gun from one of the dead bodies. But who the hell are we going to find? I guess someone in the circus. We're going to ask Wiggins. Press Wiggins' assistance. Back to Half Moon Street we go. I like how you take different routes to these cases and kind of surmise your own thoughts if you decide not to really pursue the further investigating of clues any further. I just kind of I could have just ended that and this mission like 20 minutes ago, based on the evidence I found at the time. Okay, let's go ahead and find Wiggins. Where's Wiggins? Where'd he go? Wiggins, my, what are you doing here? You'd best be leaving and be quick about it. I've done nothing wrong. You'd learn more by watching Mr. Holmes. He knows exactly what he's doing. Not like you. Oi. Oi. Watch your tongue. He arguing with this kid. Con uh, constable. Mr. Holmes? Good news for you, Wiggins. The investigation has proven Happen very interesting chair. so far. Oh. We found facts Light. and details that confirm your brother's innocence. I knew it, Mr. Holmes. But for now, Wiggins, we need your help. Anything you like, Gov. I need you to locate a circus that has stopped over in London. 
it needs to have disposed of at least one exotic animal. A very large one. You can count on me, Mr. Holmes. We're going to the circus. Final act. Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment. Next morning, very early. I do hope that those children don't get into trouble, Holmes. Don't worry, Watson. I predict some news in... seven seconds. Mr. Holmes, we found it! Here it is! Of all brothers, greatest show on earth. And this is a young Indian elephant, the highlight of the show. Duval Brothers, a well-known traveling circus that is currently stopped in London. I believe that is exactly the type of circus we are looking for. I'll pay it a visit. Find that last piece of uh, Greek uh, jewelry. It's like we found two of them the necklace and then the bracelet. I think we're missing the ring. Hey! Oh, stop right there! Good morning, sir. Pardon me, but why am I not allowed to walk around here? Because it's private. Well, I only wanted to meet the artists. Hmm? You're wanting to apply for... Nah. You don't look like the type of uh, artistic lockpicker that we're looking for. You might be surprised. What? Nah. I don't think so. Clear off. You're a bit slow to catch on, eh? Get lost. I myself in order to get into the circus. All right. That's the only time we ever had to use our disguise at this point in the game. I know you can change, I know you can disguise yourself, but they never really made it a, too much apparent that it makes much of a difference. This is like the only time that I can remember that you have to disguise yourself. Maybe like once other, maybe another time before you had to wear a particular suit. Beyond that, um, not really, you know. Let's, uh, disguise ourselves and not sure where he think he said so let's uh let's get artistic here Work? I don't know. I highly doubt that a lock picker would wear an outfit like this. Oh, what you wearing? Needy outfit, he said. 
don't know. Bandit? Spectacles are unpopular. Um Spectacle. Uh, be more artistic. I'd better wear a shabby hat. From what your hat you got on now? That one looks shabby to me. Stay where you are. What are you doing here, and where is Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> Calm down, Watson. Take deep breaths now. It's me. Oh, thank God, Holmes. I can't get used to your disguises. Thank you, Watson. That means I am ready to go. It looks the same to me. Just less well dressed. I wear his shitty clothes and a mustache. That's all I needed, huh? What's your name? My name is Nigel. I'm here to open the locks. Talented, eh? Let's see. Go inside the marquee and show yourself to Charles Foley. And I'd highly advise you not to trick him. Got that? I've got it. I'm just looking around. I know there's probably not going to be much that I can really examine. This is just more like... environment and stuff, just pretty much window shades. But a lot of the stuff you're gonna be examining really is gonna be probably where I'm supposed to go. But the OCD in me has to got him has to make sure uh, I get every clue as possible as much as possible. This scene this game seems more uh catered to a little bit more of the mainstream audience. Not the most complex game ever. There's some stuff that gets so, your head scratching. Here, just as you asked. And what about the money? What about war reliance? Some of the barrels are wet. Transportation issues. It couldn't be out. Whatever. We'll be here after war, midnight though, to pick up the war, supplies. War though, Jesse. I want to be Jesse, paid first. Though, Jesse, though. No. You'll be paid after we make the transfer, as I said. He did it. Right. I hope that no one saw you. Jesse, though, the police Jesse, are on the lookout. Of course not. I'm a professional. Glad to hear it. Be ready How's it going, man? I'm doing pretty good. This is my first day uh, on my vacation. Uh, I just quit my last, or quit my recent job, and um, gonna be transitioning over to a new one starting like the first week or so in January. So I'm just, I'm decided to decided to put my two weeks in, my two weeks notice in, and uh, kind of relax, decompress, as George Costanza would say on Seinfeld, and uh, just. Pretty much just chill, man. I, I mean, I haven't had a, a nice vacation for a long ass time, and after working there for two years, I just I need, really needed one. I'm very excited about the new direction that uh, I'm gonna be taking with the new job and everything, and I feel like I'm gonna be a lot more happier and get paid more. So, thumbs up to that. Always uh, strive to do more than strive to do more than what you have right now. From lambs You're worth more than into what. lions. Those what you are got words going on. of encouragement and defiance. They always have to strive. Picture of a man? That's a picture of a contemporary gentleman pizza. wearing a Robin Hood hat. Interesting. This poster was clearly made to fire up rebellion amongst the people. Beyond that, I'm doing pretty good, man. Just chilling. Um, I'm probably going to watch some stuff uh, online. Watch some movies, uh, catch up on my Netflix. I have a lot of shit that I that I want to do that I, I have pretty much a lot of time for. I can pretty much do whatever, man. I'll be month. I'll be off for a month. I'm gonna be uh, going ahead and reading up on some comics. 
working on being the new Kojima, as you already added. This printing press is old, but still quite capable of printing hundreds of pages per day. Hmm, there are enough posters to paste across half of London's walls. How about you, War Reliant? How are you, how are you doing today? Be streaming some more Fallout today? This wooden barrel is damaged. It is difficult to say what is inside. This wooden barrel... There is a spot on this barrel that was intentionally painted out. <laughs> the crest of the Honorable Artillery Company. Could it be gunpowder? I need to be sure. Sure, sure, if you wanna... If you wanna say that. Oh. Judging by the fractions and the scent, I can confirm that it is, in fact, gunpowder. Very nice, man. That's all we need is just to chill out, play some games, stream, and that's all you need. That's all you need when you're when you're off from from work or any kind of responsibilities. So you're the new voice. I want you're the only a person I the only other person I really watch on on Twitch, I don't really keep up with Twitch streams that much anyway, anymore. The barrels are rough. I'm kind of trying tested. to get. I'm trying to get it my own thing going here on Twitch too, and I'm trying to get back into the game of things. Powder kegs, a printing press, and a great many blank papers. All of this was stolen by the Merry Men quite recently, and these poster samples. I am quite sure it is not a coincidence. The Merry Men are planning some sort of sabotage. Stop right here. Who are you? Are you Charles Foley? Maybe. They say that I can open any door. Do they now? We'll see that lock near the chains on the table over there. Open that. Oh, I. Right. Um, but yeah, man, that's, uh, I'm trying to get my own thing going now with my, my stream. I'm trying to get back into it be more consistent which i I've, I've have been i mean i have my own that schedule for now i have uh thursday friday and saturday at seven so i've been trying to at least stream on those times maybe not always consistent on the uh on the times of stream but i do I, I have been streaming on those days and uh i want to be streaming i'm probably going to be streaming more day by day i mean if i if i'm up for it and I'll, I'll always let people know on twitter that i'll be doing that so I'm going to be doing that for at least a whole month since I'm going to be off and not really be doing much. That'll be something I'm very excited for. And, uh, yeah, I've gained a, gained a few followers since I started again. You know, I was, I was playing Dark Souls the other day. And I mean, Bloodborne. Bloodborne, not Dark Souls. Bloodborne, and then this game I started playing. This is just kind of a game I wanted to finish because it's in my kind of my gaming backlog that I bought. And uh, much very, I mean, much thanks to you as well for uh, game people who are watching your stream or relying to check out this one too. And got a follower from uh, Dr. Mario over there, Dr. Mario Potatoes, up with his veins right here. <laughs> um, but beyond that, he's got the ring, stolen antique. Beyond that, I would like to keep that going. This guy did it. It is. It is a pretty much a slow, slow and steady thing. I don't. I'm not expecting too much from it. I'm just kind of doing what I like, and it's just playing video games. And if anyone who's very who's interested in checking me out. Hey, that's great. More power to you, and and I appreciate the support in any any way, shape, or form. I'm just I just pretty much streaming and playing video games. That's all I want to do. Since I play video games a good amount of time when I'm not doing anything, I might as well just stream it. 
and see what see all for the best from there. I would love to be a full time streamer. That'd be really cool. Uh, Charles Foley. Charles Foley. Where's an antique ring that the last missing piece of the five rams of uh, Mithlene jewel set, and also a revolver retained in his belt. It proves that Charles Foley is our mysterious jacket, the man who nimbly escaped the crime scene at Hoof My uh, Half Moon Street. Seems like a this dude over here. Need more evidence. Conclude otherwise. It's uh. Are you still two. Tim? Yeah, I'll open that lock. This shit's right here. Let's see what's in here. Let me figure out this fucking puzzle. Oh, boo, 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 boo. Yeah, I appreciate all the support, Poor Lion. And, um, I appreciate all the support, and absolutely I'll. Definitely support you as well, cause I I like what you get, I like what you do too on your streams, and just you know simple laid back stream, and you know everyone everyone can be a part of. That's kind of what I always wanted to strive for. Is. Charles Foley, here's your luck, your wanker. Oh, well, they're right. Oh, it's dark. What's in your here. name? Nigel Shirley from York. Ah, Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? Got the door key. Damn, it got dark in here. Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? Don't worry about it. Hmm. <sighs> Nigel from York. Never heard anything about you. How'd you hear about me? It's a long story. I met your brother, Vincent the Butcher Foley, in prison. He told me all about his betrayal and all about you. Before I was released, he told me that you might find a job for me one day and pay me some money for me craft. Well, he died. Seven days ago, in prison. Hmm. I'm sorry to hear that. That's all right. The traitor has paid the blood price for it. And you'll do the job anyway, because I need a talented look picker. I know just where to search for his legacy. It's all about the Hellenistic treasures, isn't it? Gosh, you fool. Now, listen up. You'll come with us tonight, and you better mind yourself. Us? Wait, who's coming then? Billy, Jack and me. And what will I get for that? We'll share the loot. The one you seem to know about. Right. Wait for us at the abandoned manor house on a corner of Ledbrook Grove and Kensington Park Road at midnight. Deal. Notting Hill Manor.
Let's do it. Here I am at the manor. Somewhere inside it are the Hellenistic treasures. This lock is quite old. It shouldn't be much of a challenge. What? Let's see. You made it sound so easy, Holmes. Not that hard, I just gotta figure out where to put these lines in place. Some kind of way to lock pick this door. So weird.
Oh boy. Let's see. Yeah, this one's a little weird. Get yeah, skipping this, huh? It'll take forever on this. I need to find where the safe is hidden and lock pick it. All right, dark in here. Both uh, in this in this room I'm in. I guess I'm right. This cupboard is an absolute mess. That really a cost for concern, Holmes. All right. Several book. It seems. So, that's the lock I must open tonight. Let me see. Oh boy. Weird ass puzzle right here.
Oh yeah, it took a while. What a surprise! Another lock! Hmm, and I won't be able to pick it. I recall that precious key around Foley's neck. It might prove a decent fit. I suppose they hired me to only open the first lock. Let us wait for the thieves trap them and find out. Let's check the thieves' possible escape routes in the event that they are caught off guard by the police from the front door. Set the traps. This door is a perfect means of escape in an emergency. The thieves won't attempt to escape through the front door if the police are right behind it. Deepa! What is up, Steve Rome? Thank you so much for checking out my the stream. The floor window is a perfect way to escape the police. Just playing some more of the Sherlock Holmes game. The final mission! The final case! Uh, what, how are you doing, Steve? How's everything going? How are the burgers? What kind of burgers you have today? This should be useful. Take old chair with me, all right. A solid rope. Hatch. This hatch leads to a cellar. No this burgers hat. today. I'm gonna have some pizza. Actually, I'm gonna order some Pizza Hut a little bit or a little bit later after the stream, and I'll be enjoying some of that. Do you guys like Pizza Hut? I know it's not the, like the. I'm sure there's better pizza out there, but that's kind of like. The only place that's close to me, so I, I figured I'd get that. I like that stuffed crust pizza, though. I can't go wrong with that. Some good shit. You just woke up. <laughs> Very nice, Steve. What do you th what do you have? Uh, what do you think you have planned on do um, doing today? The door is now blocked. When are you gonna play some of that Bloodborne DLC like I am playing through? The door is. So they won't be able to go through there. Pizza. Mmm. I'm a Domino's man. Yeah, this should be nothing useful. wrong with that. What do you, uh, what do you, what's, your, what do you like on your pizza there? What's your uh, go-to, go-to thing to put on that pizza there? This ha I like me a good simple supreme pizza. I never really tried any of the. Uh, any. The ground floor window is a perfect way. I haven't to tried any of the uh, exotic uh, pizzas. or the kind of weird pizzas they have. I actually tried the. Um, I actually tried the, the pizza from Pizza Hut. It was the, the the hot dog pizza where they had the, the hot dogs rolled up like as the crust. I remember if you remember that. It was this I was pretty disappointed well. in that. No one will escape I this fan of it. window. Now. Kind of ruined the pizza. If it was like a separate appetizer, I probably would not maybe enjoy a little bit more. But it doesn't really go well. 
I may try something different today at Pizza Hut. Well, we'll see. I have to. I'll have to look at the menu. There is no ladder. If anyone falls here, he will need assistance to Come get out. Come on, shit going on over here. Uh, oh, you jump over that. This hat. Okay. The door. I put something there. So we're pretty much planning uh, uh, a trap here for criminals we're going to catch. Have a, maybe have a chandelier drop on his head. I wonder what this old chandelier is doing on the floor. It looks as though it was. Oh, no, I get, get I can get down on a regular Supreme Pizza. I gotta put some of that pepperoni, some of that sausage, some veggies, and uh, stuffed crust with some garlic seasoning on the crust, and I'm good with that shit. Some good stuff right there. If anyone takes the hammer, the rope will uncoil and make the chandelier fall. If he runs through the dining room and takes a sledgehammer to force open the door, the chandelier will knock him Got down. Him. I just gotta figure that out. There's... Although this window is high above the ground, it would be possible for one of the thieves to attempt to use it for their escape. This should be useful. There's some Home Alone, home alone shit we're going. Doing over here. Place the beads down here. Uh, and the fall on his ass. <laughs> One step on the beads, and our thief will go flying. I should walk carefully here. Else my plan will be ruined. <laughs> Any thief who finds his way upstairs will roll down very quickly. I'm kind of stuck on that last part there. Last escape route. See if there's anything I can pick up here. I may yield some idea as to where I, what I could do to stop that last guy to jump over that hatch. The thieves won't it that's the last guy will jump over it, so I put like a sheet over this maybe. Need a sheet.
goals. There you go. Carpet. <laughs> that I was trying to find. This should be useful. Now we put it on that open hatch. <coughs> Not an open Ugh. hatch, <coughs> just a nice carpet on the floor. I should walk carefully here, else my plan will be ruined. <coughs> That's right. Damn. Now, if a thief runs through the kitchen, he'll pay a surprise visit to the cellar. The traps for my circus companions are all prepared. I can leave now, but I'll return later with Charles Foley and his companions. All right. <clears throat> traps are set. What about you, Overline? What do you like on your pizza? Shout out to pizza. <coughs> oh, Jesus, excuse me. I had a tickle in my throat. Some evidence requires additional something I missed. So that we have this, we have uh, unraveled that the uh, the Charles dude seems to be involved. Basic mushroom and pepperoni. I feel ya. I feel that. I'm very open-minded when it comes to food. I'll eat anything. Police! Police! Got him. Stop where you are! Where are they? Trapped, Watson. With your assistance. How so? Well, you sounded mm. just like a real Bobby, my dear fellow. You startled Chicken them into the traps. Oh yeah, jalapeno on the pizza's good too. I did? I assure you, Watson, it was quite an entertaining show. They will not escape the house now. You scum! And this is the pistol used for the murder in Half Moon Street. How do you know about that? Have you closed the case yet, Sherlock? <clears throat> Mycroft, what are you doing here? Did you follow me? Sherlock, it may seem that I used you, but you should be pleased to know that you have served our queen well, in this instance. So now, let us catch the big fish. But this man is not one of the merry men. No. Then why exactly are we here, Sherlock? This gentleman, Charles Foley, has been involved in a double murder, and the hunter of a set of valuable antiques, the Hellenistic treasures, which disappeared in a theft many years ago. You're no better than a coppers! I am better than you. Throw this shit. Antiques. Antiques. Hellenistic treasures. Indeed. Nothing but trifles. Where are the merry men? I don't know why you are asking me, Mycroft. They are yours to find. I'll see you soon, brother. dear brother. Precious safe, long lost art. <clears throat> The antiques discovered inside the hidden safe of the abandoned manor at Notting Hill represent a collection of Hellenistic treasures that were stolen in 1885 and considered to be lost. So it is all done. Foley's vengeance. <clears throat> Charles Foley organized the theft of the Hellenistic treasures, which was related to the double murder at Half Moon Street. Leighton was Leighton Chapman was a witness to the crime. Um. Let me take a look here. Acrobat, crossfire, <clears throat> double murder. 
Did that change anything? Firing position. So conclusions. Um, Kenneth Butler and Brian Fricotti both died of a crossfire which each, with each of them holding a gun. One of the guns is now missing. Okay. Vanishing act. person who was seen by Leighton escaped the crime by climbing the wall. His skillful acrobat criminal took Took a gun from one of the dead bodies. Get out of my tats. <clears throat> Absolve Foley. Condemn Foley. Organized and executed a wicked plan of revenge, which added to the theft of ancient and valuable treasures. He deserves to rope. I don't think he's that bad, but uh, it, uh, he was there. Without anybody, I don't think it's Necessarily the case, he stole the stuff. So let's absolve him and confirm our moral choice. We'll take it easy on him as we've been Charles taking Foley, it easy on him. You were a witness to a double murder. You were standing next to Vercotti when Butler fired at your accomplice. The jeweler missed him, but they proceeded to kill each other with simultaneous shots. Even if your intention was to retrieve the stolen treasure, you did not intend to kill. I shall inform Inspector Lestrade of that fact, so your sentence should be the lighter. You are a fine gentleman, with your fake pity. I do what I think is right. It is never due to pity. Farewell, Foley. I shall leave now, Watson. Gentlemen, please take our friends here into custody. Where are you going? I have unfinished business. I'll see you at Baker Street. Hmm. Solve the case. Be careful with the lamps. Don't bring them too close to the barrels. Good evening, gentlemen. Who's there? That is of no importance. What matters is who you are, and the plans that you have here. <laughs> so, you can stop the us biker, from carrying the maps? I know, right? Eventually, yes. Hey, careful. The Merry blow Men. us all up. I'm listening. We are a group known as the Merry Men. But I suppose you knew that already. We are the men who've already lost everything of value in their lives. We are ruined shopkeepers. We are workers who were fired from their jobs, honest people who were robbed. We were forced out from our homes and thrown onto the street. And all of this in the name of the so-called law. The laws that were set out by our government. The laws that make the commoners only more vulnerable and the wealthy more protected. We are not only from the British Empire. Some of us are from the New Lands, America, Australia. And we are many. But men, we are still... And we are merry, for that we stopped being afraid. For those powers that be had done their best to plant the fear inside our souls, and we accepted it so easily. The fear advised us to keep our heads bowed. It prevented us from fighting. Bankers and politicians, they own our lives, our work, our bread, and they push us to compete between each other, just to see who may serve them better. But in the end, they are the few, so they are weak. They are nothing without their titles. We should not fear them. Our so-called masters should fear us instead. The time has come for our group to stand tall. Our great and many merry men. We are going to blow up the London Stock Exchange. No life shall be lost. But ownerships, debts, and property titles? 
they shall all be destroyed. They're only papers, after all. So many people will be freed over this night. That is a radical step to take. What result do you truly expect? Chaos. But soon people will understand that they are free, free. and that they don't belong to anyone. They will be able to work for themselves, together, without letting the rulers dictate what to do, and finally justice will arise. What you are intending to do is a crime. It is not justice. How do you see justice, then? Kids go to prison for a loaf of dry bread. And how many lords do you see punished for stealing from their people, sending them to their deaths in mines or overseas to fight for land? Our masters wouldn't hear us. So now it's time to sing the song of the merry men. Will you let us do our duty? Uh, you let me choose. Throw cigarettes. Throw cigarette. That's interesting. That's a tough one. What do you guys think? Should I let them uh, destroy the bank? Nobody gets killed, but I guess uh, I guess their intention is to step this clear to everybody and start a new fresh. But it is not. Uh, it is not justice. It is a crime that they're doing. Or should I let them? By throwing that their cigarette in the bucket of water. I'm gonna let you guys decide. What do you think? I'm gonna get the full verdict on this, and I'll decide accordingly. Probably the only conundrum I've ever I've had in this entire thing. Very interesting. What would Sherlock Holmes do? Very good at crime solving. Does he really care about justice that much? Be a moral man? I'm an agent of war. That's right, uh, that's right, Steve. He is an agent of water. He's in a. He's in. He investigates. He does investigations. Works with the. Works with the police. Very very. Moral conundrum right here. Should I let them? Throwing that cigarette in the water. Should I foil their plan? Where am I? Where the hell am I? So this will throw... What will this do? I throw this, this will blow up their whole area, or this will blow up... And this bucket of water will just... I'll let them do it. So... Stop them. A little weird right here. I think I'll be able to replay this, but I don't, I, I'm just curious. People will still die. Powder trail, bucket of water. Do it. Oh, let's throw it, blow this. When people fight the order, they are too blind to see the consequences that throw society into chaos. I shall stop your actions, but not you. Run. Now. Ah. Uh... God damn. Do you make it out in time for that? I did the right thing, right? I stopped them from creating chaos. Sherlock Holmes spoke some wise words right there. So, interested in Russian literature now. Quite lately. It is an interesting book. I remember a few lines. Really? I tried reading it myself, but I had a hard time understanding it. Yes, Doctor. It's about intelligence. Sherlock, I vaguely recall one of the lines. Sometimes it takes something more than intelligence to act intelligently. Hmm. There were also a few words along the lines of pain and suffering are always inevitable for a large intelligence and a deep heart. Mm. Tell me, Doctor, mm. does my brother show any signs of pain or suffering? Uh, not that I know of. Because you see, Doctor, 
Behind all of his masquerade, my brother does possess a deep heart. So deep that he does not recall where he places his love. Well, I'm sure that... Uh... His love and his duty that, in the first place, should be directed towards the Empire. For without it, we would be nothing. A country filled with uncivilized men. And the Empire needs order and discipline. It has no room for chaos. People who commit crimes, or at the very least intend them, deserve punishment, Sherlock. Without justice, there can be no civilization. But we serve the truth, not justice. Your truth, Doctor, that may prove immoral. Allowing people to terrorize London, destabilizing the whole Empire. Terrorize only the powers whom you serve, Mycroft. Not I, not Watson, not Mrs. Hudson, not Wiggins. Sherlock, the merry men are to be stopped. Not by me. You created the merry men. Stop them yourself. Only make sure that you don't create ten more merry men by arresting the Alan. one. Good night, Dr. Watson. Anything in the post, Watson? Any clients worthy of our attention? Only a second reminder from Mrs. Hudson about our new neighbour. She urges you to remove your... Oh, I don't care about that. Holmes, the lady who will be moving in shortly has requested the use of our spare room to place all of her boxes. Wait, what? A, a lady? A lady? Hey, I got that right. So, uh, Foley's vengeance, I got all the clues. No doubt Charles Foley will be in prison. He organized the, he organized the theft of ancient treasures that rightfully belonged to the British Museum. In fact, his band was hired by the Merry Men, who planned a revolution in London, but he did not directly commit the murder of Half Moon Street. You have decided that under such circumstances, this sentence can be shortened. There you go. Yeah, this game's pretty cool, Steve. Uh, I'm pretty, uh, I've had, had a good time with it. Very, uh, very fun game. Very underrated. It was very, it was very overlooked when it came out. It's pretty simple, not too complicated, but it's complex enough to kind of get your head scratching a little bit. But some of the cases are pretty fun. Their, their crimes, your punishments. I think that's it, right? Uh, we have finished it, and I ended with uh, being a man of character. I was very compassionate to uh, almost everyone that I uh, ended up uh, solving the cases for. And really, wasn't I really wasn't much of a bastard to a lot of people that may have committed the crimes. They had their own reasons for committing them, so I, I was I took it easy on them. There's that widow lady we had in the last case. I liked it. It was pretty cool. I mean, all of these uh, all these stories are pretty uh, self-contained. Uh, so each uh, each case you work on, which is only six cases, all of them were standalone, and they all had their own kind of storylines going on. So there wasn't really an overarching storyline going out going around throughout the whole game. Not really. They're all very just standalone. It felt like you were just reading like a like short stories on Sherlock Holmes. Pretty much all it was. Every every mission, every case you do is probably a com Probably would take you about like an hour and a half or two hours maybe to finish on each one. So, very cool game. I liked it. Very interesting. A lot of interesting ideas. The way to tackle like this, uh, the character of Sherlock Holmes and what he does, and a lot of cool little gaming features that I like to see more in some other modern games. Definitely, I think it's a lot better than L.A. Noir in terms of like you actually doing some investigating. You actually put a lot of things together reenact scenes and stuff. Very cool. I like this game. But yeah, that is it, folks. This is the uh, the conclusion of uh, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment. Available on the PS4, PC, and the Xbox One if you choose to desire to play those. I don't know if they're out on the last-gen consoles. I don't think they are. I don't think they would run as well because the graphics aren't, are pretty good. They're not, they're not too bad to look at. Facial animations could use a little work, but Beyond that, it's not necessarily the whole point of the game. You're not really having to detect uh, if someone's lying to you or not by the facial expression. So that's not... Oh, shit. My earphones fell out. But that's not a huge... Uh, not a huge contention for, uh, for putting points down in the game. That's just how it is. You know, it's a smaller studio. So I would probably have, like, a mid-tier budget, not a triple-A budget. Very cool. 
I urge you guys, uh, I'm sure it's probably cheap now. Uh, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and, Crimes and Punishments. Probably very cheap now to get for uh, the PS4 or Xbox One. Probably you can get it online too, through the stores. Through the PSN and uh, Xbox Store. Maybe probably get it for cheap. If not, I'd probably get it on a disc. I can I can see this. Uh, I I think I got this for like thirty five dollars. It's not pretty good. Pretty good game. Um, Peter Morris. Some of these names are I don't I don't recognize. So all these are not as well known. Oh, Kevin, hey, look, they used to say they used this uh, open source Kevin MacLeod uh, music. All these are like. Pre-licensed music they used in this game, and all of them really worked well for the game. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, what I'm saying they're small studio, small studio, so they don't necessarily have the budget of of other developers to get like get licensed music. So very cool. I gave him credit for that. I heard that. I've seen that name before. I I, I probably used one of his songs or one of my YouTube videos to get so I can get it monetized. Very cool. I'm very glad I finished this. This is a fun game. A fun game that I uh, wanted to finish up, and what better way to finish it than doing it on on the stream? What is this? Crimes and punishments. What am I doing here? So I, I thought that there was going to be more impact than, as to like the choices you made. Uh, well, I, I thought there was gonna be impact on what you know, what you did right and what you did wrong throughout the whole game, but not really. I mean, all these are standalone, like I said, and I think I got mostly all of them wrong. I think maybe I got that wrong. That's a conclusion, but for the most part, I got everything right. You can press this, you can press the button to tell you, which will spoil your experience by finding out if you got it right or wrong. I think I might have got that wrong. But oh well. The game doesn't make it seem too obvious if you pinpointed the, the crime on someone. You pretty much kind of roll with it. So that is it. This is how the, the whole game is going to be like on the menu. Very nice. I know that there's other Sherlock Holmes games that the same developer worked on. They're mainly on, like, I saw them, they're mainly on Steam, so I may want to go and check them out. I really wanted to play the the one that had uh, Jack the Ripper in it, so all these are, all these games are made by the same developer, and they're all kind of, uh, very cool that they got to see a console release for this game. It's very fun. I enjoyed it. I'll definitely play another one of these if they put one out. Not a bad, not a bad value, and I like me some good... Victorian era crime solving, so that's that's never a problem with me. We'll go to the main main menu, and there we go. Sherlock Holmes: Crimes and Punishments. Good good ass game right here.